different. All right, welcome to Quick Tips with Two Fat Cooks. Eric is gonna show you what to do with your overflow tomatoes. That is super quick and easy and takes very little time out of your day. And it's a great way to preserve these gorgeous tomatoes that are coming in right now. You want to just come over here and dry these? That I way I'm not that. having to yeah, wait yeah. too much time. So we're basically just taking some number two tomatoes that we got. Uh, one of the virtues of knowing your farmers is if you're doing something that don't need a pretty tomato, a lot of times you can pick up, sometimes they call them bees, sometimes they're number twos, canning tomatoes. Um, these are just ones that they don't think are pretty enough to make it out. But just Sully, look how gorgeous that is. Yeah, no joke. They're usually beautiful. Um, but there'll be some cosmetic blemishes and stuff like that. But So we're just taking these guys and we're just getting the dirt off of them by running them under some cold water. You'll notice he's rubbing tomatoes. The, the sand, when it rains, likes to bounce up and stick to the tomatoes. And so he's rubbing it really good to make sure he gets all of the sand and the little dried on leaf bits that stick to the tomatoes. Now the trick that we're doing today is basically just a way to preserve the tomatoes quickly without having to worry about canning or doing a whole lot of foo-foo. So while you're doing this, if you see any imperfections or stuff that you're gonna to wanna to take off, you're gonna be able to do that at the end of the process. But for right now, you just want them clean. All right, so we have washed and dried them. We dried them mostly just so they wouldn't stick to the pan. I have a little silicone sheet I'm using here. You don't have to use one. Um, do not use aluminum foil because when they freeze, they will stick to the aluminum foil and you'll get stuck with little bits of tin foil to your frozen tomatoes. Other than that, really, whatever you have works. A plain sheet will work too. You just may have to wash it afterwards because these may split and leak a little bit during the freezing process. Wax paper? Wax um, paper would be fine, honestly, parchment. Just a plain sheet would be fine. You'll just have to wash it. No, because those will also stick, stick to the tomato. Right. Yeah, yeah. You don't want anything that will stick to the tomato. So that's it. These guys are clean, dry, and they're going in the freezer for 24 to 48 hours a week if you're busy. No big deal with the skin on. It really doesn't matter if they're sitting in there uncovered. And um, when these are nice and solidly frozen, we'll come back and show you what to do with them from there. And having this type of setup, especially with a silicon mat or keeping some parchment paper in the house where you can do these, this is really your best bet for your first freeze on almost anything you're gonna put up vegetable-wise and such. Because you can lay it out on the sheets in nice even layers where it's not clumped up, let every individual piece freeze, laid out flat, then pour it off into a bag or a box or whatever you keep your stuff in. That way when you go back for a handful later, you don't have this big giant brick of frozen that plops out that you've got to wait to thaw. You can open the thing, pull out a handful of onions or okra or whatever, and you go ahead and toss them in Absolutely. whatever you're using. And they actually do freeze faster this way, which causes less cellular damage in the long run. Cellular, that's a hard word. So we're gonna throw these in this freezer and um, we'll see you back in a couple of days. And also, just to build on what Christy's saying, it causes a lot less wallet damage. The more stuff's laid out like that, the more efficient it freezes, the less work your freezer is doing. That too. So if you're putting a lot of stuff up, you wanna watch you're not overloading the freezer, so the less more electricity. it works, the better it goes. Absolutely, and this is great also for your wallet because none of this is going to go to waste. You're not going to find these half fuzzy in a week because you didn't have time to eat all of them. This is a great way to put food up that's fresh now for later when it's no longer tomato season. Alright, that's us. Okay, so our tomatoes have been in the freezer for quite a few days because we got a little busy. Um, they're nice and frozen. So much fun. And we're going to put some of them in the freezer for the future. So we're going to label our bag with what they are, tomatoes, the month, June, and the year, 2023, just so that later on when we're rifling through the back of the freezer, we'll know what they are. So I'm going to weigh these so that when I pull these out for a recipe, I know about how much I have. All right, so. That is a lovely two pound bag right there. I'm gonna get two two pound bags out of this. Wonderful. 
again, I'm going to label. You use an E? No one uses an E. You use an E when it's plural. You don't use an E when the it's Vanderbilt not plural. The Vanderbilt uses an E when it's plural. Oh, All right, no. Dan Quayle. <laughs> What? He was the one who like spelled potato wrong. He was damn quiet. <laughs> he put in. He wanted the e. Or he, yeah, he wanted to add the e to potato. Man, that was a while back. Okay. Very old. Now these last ones we're going to put in a pan to thaw because we're going to use them to make the easiest red sauce ever. So. When these thaw, we're going to show you how to use these to make the easiest red sauce ever or whatever it is you want to make with them. So we'll be back again later on to show you what to do when you've thawed your frozen tomatoes. Is there a weight there or is it just four? Also pounds? two pounds. Okay. Yes, yeah, everybody turned to these. were gorgeous tomatoes. We got a lot of nice use out of those. So we will see y'all once these thaw. Okay, so. It's been a day since we got the tomatoes out. Um, I originally had them in a saucepan to thaw, but with this bowl, y'all can see it a little better. You see all that liquid there. Don't throw that away. That's tomato essence. You want that. That's a lot of lovely tomato flavor. So we're going to leave that. I'm actually going to pour it in the pan that I'm going to cook these tomatoes in, just so I don't make a mess. Now, you take your skin and you just peel it right off. Look at that, gorgeous. No effort at all. And of course I didn't get a, a pan or a bowl ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my sweet pea. So we're gonna put that in our little thing. And I just pinch the core out. You can cut it out if you'd rather or use a pair of scissors, but honestly I find pinching it works perfectly. And you are left with basically um, the equivalent of a whole canned tomato. And so we're going to put that in our pan oh, and repeat. Can of tomatoes. Well, a canned, whole can. canned, canned whole tomato? That's complicated. Man, this is like, I need some grammar help on this one. Come yeah, on, I English a, minor. Let's I'll just say, just, I, I, I can use my useless education saying, if you'd I, like. I married you for a reason. Help me out with my grammar here. <laughs> yeah, the English minor. <laughs> That's what sealed the deal because that's a money maker right there. Well, that in the butt. So. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to just, and y'all see how easy this is. There's just no, now, I, of course, it does take up freezer space, so that's the benefit of canning is you can just put those on shelves, but this seriously is going to take less than five minutes, and we have two pounds of gorgeous processed tomatoes ready to rock and roll that took maybe five minutes to put up. And now I have a lovely pan of crushed tomatoes. And this bit right here is really what you should be doing if you open a can of crushed tomatoes anyway. Crushed tomatoes? Uh, tomatoes? Whole tomatoes, Can canned whole tomato, there we go. And um, so now I have basically stewed tomatoes ready to go. So I hope you'll give this a try if you have the freezer space and tomatoes coming in like crazy. Eric has a note he'd like um, to add. Just, uh, and obviously the whole tomatoes in the freezer do eat up a little bit of space. Once it's worked down to here, especially if you're going by weight, you can pour this back off into like a little restaurant container or something. There's little square tubs you used to be able to get. Stick it back in the freezer and you've got two cups of crushed or you know crushed tomato ready to go when you need it. Yeah, you absolutely could. So they stack better. They now, definitely stack we better. Laid these out for a little bit, but because we we're coming back to it the next day, we did finish thawing them in the um, fridge, which recommend just because it's a tomato. Uh, if, especially if you're doing it like we like to do it overnight. The, the the night before, I thought, oh, we want to make tomato sauce, so we grabbed them and put them in the bowl and put them in the fridge to thaw. If you're going to make it later that day, you you can just leave it on the counter. That's perfectly fine. So I hope you'll give this a try, and I also hope you'll check out the tomato sauce recipe that we're about to make with these. It's posted somewhere here on the same page, and it's super easy and delicious. Enjoy. Exactly.